All right. As we get into our study of st statistics, today we're going to talk about the measures, measures of dispersion, but we're not going to talk about all of them. We're going to talk about two. The first is going to be variance. The second, I'm sorry, the first is going to be range, and the second one is going to be standard deviation. When we start to talk about large amounts of data, which is what you're going to do if you're looking at statistics in a magazine or statistics, you know, in a newspaper, they're looking at large quantities of data. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to say, how far spread out are these things? And so that's what we're looking at today, a couple of, a couple of different methods of doing that, okay? First is the range. The range is a set of values, the range of a set of values is the difference between the largest and the smallest values. This is not really a big surprise. So if you say, one game I scored two points, and one game I scored 36 points, what was the range of points that I scored? Okay, so it's the difference between the largest and the smallest values. Okay, let's just go straight into looking at an example of this. Alan and Tara took these tests, and they have these scores. Okay, so that we're going to find the range of Alan and Tara's scores. So, when we do this, basically what we're looking at is, Alan and Tara took these tests, at various you know increments so they have you know Alan took it or Tara took it or whatever and what we're doing is we're finding out each of the ranges how do we do this well for Alan we're gonna take his largest and his smallest scores and find the difference well he got a hundred on this one that's his highest now we're gonna subtract from that his lowest which is 55 And so the range of Allen scores is 65. Okay, for Tara, seemingly she does better. Like Allen got a 68 here, and he got a 55 here, but she's right around this 80 percent mark. Well, her highest is going to be this 84 here, and we're going to subtract subtract from that her lowest score of 76 and we're going to get 8. When we're looking at measures of dispersion, we're talking about data in its raw form, so uninterpreted. So what this tells us is Alan had this great dispersion of scores. He had a 65 point difference between his highest and his lowest, whereas Tara only had an 8 point difference. And so what we're going to begin to see is we can use these to talk about data. Was Tara more consistent? What was Alan, what was Alan's, you know, problem on these one tests that were low because he was able to get 100. What was the difference? How do we assess this? How do we use this data to figure out how the dispersion? How do we use this data to figure out what it means? How do we use the data? But first we got to get the data. So, so we're collecting data right now. Okay. Here's another example. I would like for you to try this one. This is about finding range and it's about height. It's a little bit tougher because height doesn't have normal units. It's got like feet and inches. So why don't you try to find the range of heights between these two people? Okay, so Robert Pershing and Gul Mohammed. Okay? Now, that's range. Our second one is standard deviation. Our second thing we're going to talk about today is standard deviation. Well, what is standard deviation? It makes use of the difference between individual scores and the mean of a set of values. We talked about mean already this chapter being what we would call average, okay? So using standard deviation. For a population, this is what standard deviation looks like. We've got this little symbol here for standard deviation. And it's going to be equal to the square root of the summation. We learned about that symbol already. So that's when we add all of them up. Of x minus average or mean. And this is for a population. We're making this distinction between population and sample because a population would be all or a lot of, whereas sample is only going to be a small portion. We're making this distinction by using a different letter for each. Okay? The formulas are much the same, but notice there's going to be one slight but important difference.
up here. We're taking this as the mean of the data. And down here, x bar is the mean. So those are basically the same thing. We're still taking each individual number, x, and subtracting the mean from it. And down here, we're still taking the number x and subtracting the mean from it. The big difference comes on the bottom, n or n minus 1. We need to account for the fact that a population is huge and a sample is small. So that's how we're going to do this. Okay, so n minus 1, using that, yields better estimates for statistics. Okay, so that's going to give us a better, a better feel and a better number in association with our data. Okay, so let's try an example. The steps in general. This is an example of how we would use the steps in order. Okay, and so here are the steps. The first step is we are going to be using the mean a lot. So find the mean of the data. Okay, so we're going to find the mean of the data first because we're going to be using that quite a bit when we talk about standard deviation. Number two, for each number, and the system that we're going to be using allows us maximum efficiency. For each number, calculate the difference of x minus x bar or x minus the mean. Okay, so we're going to calculate, after finding the mean, each value, we're going to go down the chart and calculate x minus that mean. Okay, so we're going to square After that, we're going to square each difference. That's these. Okay, so after we find that x minus x bar or that x minus u, we're going to square that. Okay, number four, switch back to yellow. We're going to divide the sum, and by sum, I'm talking about when we add all these up. Divide the sum by n for population or n minus one for sample. Okay, so after we find that sum, we square them, find the sum, then we divide the sum by n minus for n for the population or n minus one for sample. And number five, take the square root of the quotient. Okay, so after we do all that, we're going to take the square root of the quotient. Does it take a long time? It can. It really can, depending on the size of your data. But we are going to learn how to do it by hand first. Then we are going to do it with our calculator. Okay, so let's just do an example. We're going to, a small example, and we're going to find the the standard deviation for, and this is going to be undesignated, so it's going to be population. For some reason, my pen is not really writing that well right now. So step number one, find the mean. 2 plus 4 plus 7 plus 12 plus 15 equals 40 divided by 5 equals 8. So that is equal to x bar. Okay, that's our x bar. Okay, so in step two, if you'll recall, 
we are going to, for each number, calculate the difference x minus x bar. So here's how we're going to do this. I want to set up a chart. And in one of the columns, we're going to have x minus x bar. You will see why this becomes important in just a minute. So if x is 2, 4, 7, 12, 15, you're going to notice that because this is 8, we're going to get some negative numbers. But we're going to account for that in just a minute. And I've found all those differences. Now, the next column is going to be x minus x bar. And we're going to square that. Because remember, the next step is we're going to square each difference. So we have all the differences lined up. And when we square them, we get 36, 16, 1, 16, 49. OK, so each column, we took x, x minus x bar. Then we squared it. OK, then we're going to total them up. When you add all these up, you get 118. OK, so 118 is what you get when you add all those up. Remember, that's the next step. Okay, so divide the sum. So we found the sum. Now we're going to divide the sum. So this is step four. We're going to take 118 and divide it by n minus 1 for population or n for or n for population, n minus 1 for regular. I'm actually going to change this and I apologize. I looked at my notes incorrectly. This is going to be a sample. And I should have known that because we're using x bar, and x bar denotes that it's a sample. So I apologize. So it's 118 over n minus 1 is equal to 118 over 5 minus 1 is 118 over 4, which gives us 29.5. Okay, that's 29.5. That is what we're going to take the square root of, because see, we've got this last step here that's take the square root of the quotient. Well, here's the quotient. That's the answer to a division problem. That's our quotient. So number five, we are going to take the square root of 29.5 equals 5.43. Here's how we wrap it up. S equals 5.43. We use the little s because we're talking about a sample. What does this mean? This is the standard deviation. I'm even going to circle it in another color because this is our standard deviation. This is what we wanted. It's a lot of work, but I want you to get down how to do it first, and then we'll learn how to do it on our calculator. Here's one for you. There are six numbers, okay, in this one, and note, it's a sample. So we're going to use x bar, we're going to use s, and we're going to use n minus one, okay? So go ahead and calculate that one on your own. We'll talk about it in class. That's standard deviation in a nutshell, guys, okay? We're talking about measures of dispersion, how far data is spread out. So stay tuned. We'll have more measures of dispersion coming at you. Thanks for watching.